So we know now why we care about the transpose of a matrix and the question of how to project a point onto a subspace. We care because transposes have the ability to tell us something about orthogonality, perpendicularity, which is intrinsic to the question of projection. We also have now established a series of facts that relate the properties of a matrix A with the properties of its transpose. So now, we need to find out what is the magic behind the matrix product A transpose times A that makes the normal equations solvable. In particular, under what circumstances are the normal equations solvable? Is A transpose times A always invertible? And then secondly, why, when the normal equations are solvable, is their solution related to the projection of B onto the column space of A? So first of all, let's think about why the normal equation has a solution, even though AX equals B might not. And more generally, we want to think about under what circumstances does the normal equation have a solution. So the matrix A transpose A has three important properties to linear algebra. The first of those properties is that A transpose A, regardless of whether A is a rectangular matrix, A transpose times A is guaranteed to be square. After all, if A is n by m, then A transpose is m by n. Those are compatible dimensions to multiply because the n's in the middle. And when we multiply them, the product is m by m. So here's the picture. A defines, if A is n by m, a linear transformation from Rm to Rn, as in this picture. But then A transpose defines a transformation going the other way, from Rn to Rm. And the result of the product, the matrix product A transpose A, when thought of as a linear transformation, what it's doing to a vector x from the domain Rm is it's first applying the linear transformation corresponding to A, giving me a vector Ax, which lives in the column space of A, a subspace of Rn. But then afterwards, A transpose is multiplying the result of that. So A transpose A as a linear transformation means first do A, then do A transpose. So the matrix A transpose times A really gives us a linear transformation from Rm back to Rm. Second important property of A transpose times A is not obvious why we care about it right now, but later on it will have a very big impact. A transpose A is a symmetric matrix, meaning it is equal to its own transpose. We can see that by using the one fact about multiplication of matrices and transposition that is salient here, which is that if I take the transpose of a product of two matrices, I get the product of those matrices in the opposite order transposed. So MN quantity transpose is N transpose M transpose. Applying that to A transpose A, I'm going to get A first, A transpose second, and then each of those transposed. But since the transpose of the transpose of a matrix gives us the original matrix back, A transpose A transposed is equal to A transpose A. Say that 10 times fast. Finally is the property we care the most about ultimately. Because A transpose A is a square matrix, it's reasonable to ask whether or not it may be inverted. If so, then any system of equations defined by A transpose A is guaranteed to have a solution, and that solution is guaranteed to be unique, and that is the best of all possible worlds. The good news, that we won't see why in this video we will in class, is that we can make sure that A transpose A is invertible. The bad news is that it's not a guarantee. If someone comes up to me on the street randomly and hands me a matrix A, A transpose A may not be invertible for that matrix, and in that case, the normal equations would not have a solution, let alone a unique solution. But the good news is, if we are in charge of building A, and in a projection problem we usually are, right? we have the subspace, we make A out of the columns uh, that form a basis for that subspace, as long as we're in control of that process, we can ensure that the A that we produce will have the property that A transpose A is invertible. All right, so here's the big theorem that defines for us the magic of the matrix A transpose A. The theorem says that if I have a linear subspace of Rn, let's call it S, and if it's k-dimensional, and if we have a matrix A whose column space is equal to S, so let's think of A as um, 
having columns that actually form a basis for S. In this picture here, I've drawn S as though it's a two-dimensional subspace of R3. So it's a plane going through the origin in R3. If I pick two linearly independent vectors in S, then those two are going to span all of S. And because they're linearly independent, they therefore form a basis for S. We can define the matrix A in such a way that the first vector V is the result of multiplying A by 1, 0, the first standard basis vector. The second column, v, uh, W, is the result of multiplying by 0, 1. And therefore, we can make the matrix A just the matrix whose columns are exactly the basis vectors that we found for S. That's the hypothesis. So under these circumstances, here's what the theorem guarantees. The theorem guarantees that if I have a vector x which satisfies the normal equations, then, and only then, will the line passing through b and ax, b is the point we're trying to project onto s, that the line through b and ax is orthogonal to s. So here's the picture. We're going to take b, the point we're trying to project, and we're going to multiply it by a transpose. That takes it from the r3 on the right in this example over to the r2 on the left, the domain of a. So a transpose b lives back on the left side here. And suppose that we have an x, which again, this x is going to live on the left-hand side in r2 in this example. Suppose we have an x such that if I first apply the matrix A to x, and then I multiply it by A transpose, so first do A, then do A transpose, that's going to give me, again, another vector back on the left-hand side. If that vector, if that point, is exactly the same as A transpose B, then the theorem guarantees that if I multiply x by A and land back over here inside the column space of A, which is S, that the line drawn through that point and the point B is perpendicular to S. And the converse is also true. If the line drawn through B and AX is orthogonal to the vector space S, then X will satisfy the normal equations. So we can see all of the elements that we expect to see when we're thinking about matrix transposes. We can see perpendicularity happening here. We see a geometric question. We see the column space of A being the, the main, the principal object of study here. But what's interesting is that the normal equations define a system of equations that is completely back here in R2, right? A transpose B is back here in the domain of A. A transpose AX is back here in the domain of A. And the normal equations being satisfied means that those two points are the same point. But it's somehow a surprise that we'll be able to prove why it works that all of that action that happens over here in the normal equations has the effect of exactly giving us the orthogonal projection of B onto S here in the range of A. So how that works is what we'll find out in class and what we're now set up to investigate.